Hi everyone, welcome back. It is spring break right now. So I thought we could do a morning routine together. This is gonna be a fairly quick one. I have to go get new glasses anyways, and I am about to be late. What else is new? I've been using this balm from Pericone MD. I really like this one. It's pretty basic. It's like coconut oil as the base, but let's get right into it. Skincare has always been something that I look forward to in my day to help me de-stress, whatever it is. So I have already gone ahead and washed my face and we're going to go straight into toner. The Rovectin Lotus Water Toner is a tried and true toner. My face feels so, so unbearably dry without toner. It feels itchy. I get annoyed. So I make sure to do three layers of that. In many ways, my skincare routine often reflects how I'm feeling, what my current mood is. You know, when I'm happy, I want to try all the new skincare that has launched that week. So refreshing. I want to do my 10 step skincare routine and I might even want to use a sheet mask. My skin can move now. It's so easy when you're in a happy mindset to be like, why did I ever not feel this way? I'm okay now and my problems seem way smaller than what they felt like in that moment. Because when I'm really not feeling it, my skincare routine is not seeing it either. I am doing the bare, bare skeleton of a skincare routine and that's totally okay too. It's I mean, can you see the difference already from before? so milky now so after we have some time to think about what we're gonna do about our day while we're doing those three layers of toner we're gonna go in with serum serum has easily become one of my favorite steps in the routine i usually use a milky one or a jelly one it feels so refreshing once i started really doing skincare consistently and doing a solid milky skin routine I started getting a lot of compliments on my skin. However, my beginnings with skincare and makeup were not as sweet as my experience is with them now. A huge, huge skincare insecurity that started when I was maybe a freshman in high school was my KP. KP is what they call like the strawberry skin. It's on my cheeks and I also have it on my arms. My sister has it too and it is totally harmless it is basically just aesthetics in most cases i would get so so many comments on it lauren why are your cheeks always red lauren your cheeks are so rosy you don't even have to wear blush lauren are you mad your cheeks are so red my first reactions were like i'm gonna punch the next person in the face that says something about my cheeks but then slowly the accumulation of comments really made me think, wow, do I actually need to see a dermatologist about this? It looks heavy, but then it bursts into like a water gel. So that is when I saw the dermatologist for the first time and was introduced to tinted SPFs, which I thought would be an absolute godsend for my KP. It didn't really work out well, but I wanted to find an alternative to cover up the redness. Also, I have the personality type where I get very obsessive over things that I'm fixated on and so I would forge in my mom's makeup drawer and I found this Shiseido powder foundation and I kid you not, every night I would go into the bathroom before I take a shower so she wouldn't know and I would layer on that foundation to practice how I could go to school with foundation and not make it look noticeable so i was always really aware of my cheeks and these comments from people who weren't even my friends i didn't even like these people but somehow the negative comments always stick and once you hear them it's kind of hard to shake them off but you know what your skin insecurities were probably things you were okay with until someone commented on them the KP on my cheeks, the triangular shape of my natural brows, the slight purple shadow under my eyes were not even on my radar until someone pointed them out. And although I kind of resented them for it, I can acknowledge those traits and not let them bother me. 
especially with skin it is truly so much easier said than done i would only wear my hair down or i would get super embarrassed when people would comment on my cheeks but the best solution was not to cover up my face it was actually just to stop hanging around those people <sighs> like i just woke up from a nap and so the less i heard it the less i thought about it it's taken well over five years to kind of get used to it and i still will think about it every now and then when i look in the mirror the difference now is that i'm way more comfortable with my kp on my arms and on my cheeks and it wasn't the skincare that made me feel more comfortable because my kp now looks exactly like it did then for me it just took time a long time actually to get used to it but i always knew that there was skincare that could help me improve it if i wanted to but i didn't have to at the same time oh why is this kind of chunk there are a lot of quick fixes in the world but not a lot that i recommend when it comes to skin besides pimple patches that's why i stand by my milky skin philosophy so much treating our skin with gentle and hydrating products is what's going to make our skin most happy and if i do say so myself it's also what's going to give you the best looking result i have had my glasses for over six years so it's time to get some new ones long-term skin health is really important to me uh yes i'm not saying the occasional pimple does not get me really annoyed but most people are too busy caring about their pores their pimples to notice anyway i see this as i'm trying on 20 pairs of similar looking glasses and that brings us back to what so the whole point is just about looks isn't it That is so good. No, it's so the good. Line. The more and more I thought about my KP and how it was looking to others, the more I just oh, got it's tired good. of it. It's garlic. Oh, this is so good. Wait, Salivating. It's really good. <laughs> because by being so fixated on that, how could I enjoy other things like this bread, this pizza? Not to say that I wouldn't absolutely love the perfect skin, the perfect jawline, the perfect look. But that's not the case, and that's not me, because then everyone would be AI bots. When you're with friends and family who make you happy, you don't even need to think about your skin, your insecurities, because you're having fun doing the activities you love, eating the food that you love. And isn't that so much better than just having the ideal skin. My page will always be a place where I give skincare tips and ways to improve the look of your skin because skincare is fun. It's fun to experiment, try new products. Trying skincare and makeup is honestly a hobby these days. But I also want to remind you and myself that appearance is only a small portion of the things in life. After all, who's gonna humble you if it isn't yourself? But for real, it's okay not to feel your best on one day, or even not feel your best on multiple days in a row. Just know that that time will pass, and there are so many things you can look forward to on the other side, like planning trips with your friends, going to the beach, getting ice cream on a cold, windy day. It'll be a memory in the books, one that might have taught you something about yourself. You can give yourself the permission to hang on to it for a while or let it go. I see your comments all the time about your skincare journeys, how you've gone from being really insecure about acne to now being okay with it, or using toner to help with the texture and your skin feels so much better. And if no one else says it, I'll say that I'm proud of you for sticking to a routine for putting aside your exfoliator and your retinol even if you're so tempted to use them and for taking a step back to let your skin heal we're gonna be doing skincare hopefully for the rest of our lives so let's have fun with it we're gonna try so many It'll more toners okay, we're gonna get pimples and that's just part of the process